Liberia. The best of Liberia and shows the world the truth about Liberia. We educate, elevate, and promote all things Liberia. We conduct interviews, panel discussions, debates, and more. Tune in to Focus on Liberia on Facebook and YouTube and be a part of the stories that make up the news. This is Focus on Liberia and I am Dennis Jack. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Between the Headlines with your host, Dennis Ja, and this is, of course, Focus on Liberia. In tonight's edition of Between the Headlines, we're going to be looking at the tale of two ex-rebel commanders, Mr. Kunti Kamara and Mr. Momo Jiba. How they ended, we're going to be talking about that, and I have with me former TRC commission, also journalist, Massa Emilio Washington. Massa, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, it is a pleasure always. Thank you so much. We are so happy to have you, Massa. Uh, we want to say welcome again to Focus on Liberia since you were in Paris. We've not been able to uh, do a show, so we're glad to have you. Thank you. And I want to so go straight into it. Let me welcome our viewers from across the globe. Uh, quite recently, Massa was in uh, Paris as a professional witness in the trial against Kunti Kamara, a former Ulimo fighter. We also recall that a uh, few days ago, the death of Momo Jiba, a member of the National Patriotic Front of Liberia, and also former AD camp to President Charles Taylor. Well, we're going to be talking about it too, but before any time you hear the name Massa Washington, we think TRC. So I want us to start with uh, a little bit about the TRC before we continue. The last time we were talking Massa, and a lot of people were asking about the TRC. So let's start uh, by the TRC uh, for anyone watching us right now who doesn't know the details of the TRC, just give me a summary of what the TROC is and what it concluded. What were some of the recommendations? Thank you, Dennis. Um, this is always another opportunity to uh, educate the Liberian people and also the public who are desirous and um, interested in knowing about the TROC and also understanding uh, about the work of the TROC and where uh, that process is at the moment. The TRC actually stands for Truth and Reconciliation Commission, and then we put Liberia because there has been uh, there have been several TRCs of all around the world. Um, the TRC was actually one of several institutions that were endorsed at the 2003 Accra uh, CPA clarif uh, clarification conference that actually brought about. Um, general elections, which saw Mrs. Sirleaf become president, and also, um, you know, this semblance of peace that we now have uh, obtaining in Liberia. So the TRC was uh, established by an act uh, uh, of the national legislature. At that time, it was the National Transitional Assembly uh, uh, Legislature, and they approved the TRC Act on June 10th, 2005. And it is interesting to note that that national, that interim nation, national transitional assembly, legislative assembly at the time was comprised of um, this mixture, mixture of warring faction members because it was an interim administration, you know, all the United Nations and the world had encouraged rebel fighters and uh, to lay down their arms and, and, and you know, try to um, contest, you know, try to bring some civility back to Liberia. And so uh, part of the agreement was that um, the warring factions, because, you know, they were clamoring for, for power, of course, they worried about the future. So part of the arrangements was, was that um, they will have representatives in the National Assembly, and they will be represented uh, throughout all spheres of, of, of governance of Liberia. So you had 
the TRC Act that was passed and legislated by this uh, transitional national national legislative assembly, comprising mainly a lot of you know or, or warring factions. In fact, right. all of the warring factions had representatives, and then of course you had some uh, members representing civil society. And uh, the, the TRC actually started work after the act was legislated. It was printed into handbills by the Minister of Foreign Affairs for any act to be really, really legal, even after the legislature uh, passed the act, it has to be printed into a handbill. That's the final right. process for right. legitimacy. So the TRC Act went through all of that. And the TRC commenced work actually in 2003. I mean, uh, actually the TRC commenced work in the 2000 and, and uh, uh, 2006. It was actually inaugurated in, in February 2006, following the elections of Mrs. Ellen Johnson Sirleaf as um, the first elected post-war president. So, and well, so the, so the yeah. what, yeah. what was the TRC supposed to do? What work was it supposed to accomplish? Well, the TRC had a broad mandate. Don't forget, there was a whole TRC. They had a broad mandate, mm -hmm. but um, so the, the the overarching mandate of the broader mandate was that. The TRC will investigate uh, what has happened in the country in terms of uh, the gross violations of human rights. It will hold here. It will uh, have conduct statement taking, meaning that the TRC will train people to go into the communities and get the statements of people who uh, want to say what happened to them in the war or what they saw happen to their communities or their families. And then after that statement taking process, the TRC will have here will have hearings. And we had several categories of hearings. We had, uh, but mainly we had the most popular was the public hearing, uh, hearings which took place. Uh, the, the main center was in Monrovia at the Centennial Pavilion, but then we also had public hearings in all 15 counties of Liberia and also in the state of Minnesota representing the diaspora. Yeah. And, and the TRSC held more than 700 hearings. We heard, we sat through more than 700 testimony of individuals. So we had different categories of hearings. We had individuals uh, coming up to see what happened. So we had uh, those who were actually involved in war factions. Then we had uh, the AFL. Then we had people of interest. Then we had political actors. Then we had the progressive era. And then we had women coming to testify on behalf of women's own experiences in the war. Then we had the youth. And we had children come to testify as to what happened to them, the families in the communities. Then we had special needs. Then we had a special hearing for the media because even though you know the media covered the war extensively, but the media uh, media personnel were also members of the society, so they right. live in the communities and they had their own experience. And uh, so, and we had economic crimes hearings as well. So we had uh, we had legislative hearing. We had all sort of categories of hearings. But the, the main and most popular hearings that people talk about all the time was the uh, alleged perpetrators hearing where people actually came out and some victims came out and say what happened to them, the court names. Right. And some, some alleged some perpetrators also came, people who said they were part of war infection, people who were in the in the in the military, in the armed forces who you know committed human rights violations, they came and they told their own stories and told the stories of the organizations and told the stories of the institutions. So we have public hearings. So after the public hearing phase, then the commission went into, um, into in, you know, closed down the public hearings and went into the report writing phase. Right. So, so, yeah, I, I, know, I know it's a very big thing. I just want us to uh, get, so at the end of the, at the end of the TRC process, there were recommendations. Yeah. Summarize those for me, at least in categories. Okay, so um, the, the TRC took more than twenty-two thousand statements from Liberians across the board, including in the in the United States, in in the subregion in Ghana, in Nigeria, and then also in in England and I think the Netherlands. Uh, Liberians they sent some statements uh, electronically, and then the, so after that, of course, we had more than seven hundred hearings. Right. So the final report was written, and the main volume of the final the final report actually comes in six volumes. Right. We have special we have the main report, which is 470 pages, and we have specialized reports like uh, women and children, the elderly, the media, all of that, economic crimes, and all of that. 
But the TRC actually came up with 47 major recommendations. Okay. And those 47 recommendations are subcategorized into subcategories. So under the 47 major recommendations, we have 207 sub of, of, of recommendations. And out of those recommendations, we have 57 uh, persons that have been recommended for further investigation, meaning that uh, we receive some information about them or their institution, but because the time was short, we didn't have enough time to investigate and for it to be able to, to come up with a, a determination and, and recommendations for them, or maybe we didn't get enough information that would have, um, you know, uh, actually influenced the decision. So based upon that, we say, well, it would be unfair to these individuals and this institution to just list them everywhere, you know, anywhere. So we have 57 uh, individuals that have been recommended for further investigation. Mm -hmm. And then we have 19 corporations that have been recommended uh, for, for economic crimes, meaning that um, these were the corporations that looted the country, that um, helped to destroy Liberia economically. So we're recommending uh, persecution for them in terms of the economic crimes, uh, uh, you know, persecution. And then we have 21 individuals. So we had 19 corporations that engaged in economic crimes. Mm -hmm. And we have 21 individuals that we found liable for economic crimes. So these individuals also will be going before, a, you know, economic, economic crimes court if it ever happens. And then, of course, we recommended 98 persons for prosecution, meaning that we found these individuals liable for the gross violations of human rights. So these 98 persons, we want them to go to the war crimes court. And 87 of them have been, so you have 98 for prosecution, but 87 mm -hmm. will face the war crimes court. Now, out of these 98, uh, some of them will face local, we're asking that we go through our own local jurisprudence. Right. But some of those who were considered most, because the TRC Act says that the commission consider, should consider those who bore the greatest responsibility for what happened right. in Liberia. Mm -hmm. So those who bear the greatest responsibility, who we want to face the war crimes code, the international war crimes code, there actually it is seven of them. And then mm -hmm. we, have, uh, we have 50 persons on the sanction list. Now the sanction list was basically the um, political culpability list, meaning that these people you know, they, they, they either help to fuel the war or they help to start the war or they play, you know, some major role in the war. But in the meantime, some of them were not on the battlefront or people didn't tell us what this person killed this person or this person ordered the execution of people. But their own uh, adaliases and culpability was so great, we couldn't just leave them out. And so in the TRC Act, there's, a, there's an article that says, including those who bear political responsibility. So right. we put them on the, on the sanction list. So the president, Edwin Johnson Sirleaf, former president Edwin Johnson Sirleaf is on this sanction list. And then mm. of course we have 35 individuals that we are recommending not for prosecution, but it will be left to uh, the, the, the war crimes court in, in, in the process. Thank you. So, so Ms. Washington, the key word there is recommendation. Right. What does that mean? Well, it says the commission will, it, it's a bit tricky here because people would think sometimes when you discuss the TRSC recommendations and when you use the word recommendations, people interpret recommendations very broadly and sometimes a little um, or frivolously because people think uh, uh, naturally the broader definition for recommendation would be, oh, it is, they only say, oh, this is a recommendation, it's not false, right? So mm -hmm. in other words, we are saying, uh, you can say, well, Master Baya say, you're recommending for us to do this. But what if we don't do it? It's just a recommendation. But people yeah. don't understand when you read the TRC Act, it's because the, 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 the international partners who had TRC and transitional justice experience and also civil society members, they sort of preempted the kind of figure that coming out of war based upon the experience of yeah. other countries, coming out of war, all, all sorts of things can happen, and sometimes you can find the wrong players and the wrong people catapulted to a leadership position. So if you find people like it's happening now with Liberia who are in leadership position, they're not going to implement the report. So right. what they did was, even though they said, you know, recommendations, but in Article 10 of the TRSC uh, 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 mandate, which is actually the article that speaks about uh, <laughs> um, 
recommendations and implementation of the TRC mandate, it says all recommendations shall be binding. All recommendations yeah. are binding. So that's yeah. the, so that's the caveat, and that's that's what makes it a little bit tricky for people yeah. who just want to interpret this recommendations as you know just uh, loosely. The TRC says all but, recommendations shall be binding. But, but these are not convictions because there are other people who are saying the TRC is not court, but you are convict you are convicting me. Those were not convictions. No, they, they are not convictions. That's why we didn't try them. That's why we're sending exactly. them to be tried. We're asking them so, to be tried. It's because we were not a court. So who are these recommendations made to? Or who's supposed to implement them? The, the people of Liberia with uh, spearheaded by the government and then supported by the international community. The TRC Act clearly spells out uh, who are responsible to implement the recommendations. So we know that the president and the executive represents the, uh, the people of Liberia, of course, and then you have, of course, the legislature. So it says that uh, TRC Article 10 says that the head of state shall every quarter be summoned or invited by the national legislature to explain or to give update on the uh, implementation of the TRC recommendations, meaning that the president on behalf of, of the Republic of Liberia, on behalf of Liberians, has the authority to implement the TRC recommendations. And whereas it hasn't happened or it's not happening quarterly, the legislature now, that's their role. The role of the mm -hmm. legislature is actually to serve like a, a watchdog or like a monetary arm to like watch government to say, okay, you're supposed to implement the recommendations, uh, Mr. President, or you know the executive. Mm -hmm. We haven't heard you. Please come. You know the right him and say, please come and and update us on your progress with implementing the, the recommendations. What what's happening with the TRC recommendations? So that's yeah. the role of the legislature. But unfortunately, unfortunately, neither the legislature nor the executive have actually played the role as mm -hmm. per the TRC. None of them have played a role. So, so as of today's date, where are the recommendations or where is the TRC report? Any update? <laughs> but, you know, like I always say, the TRC report is, is stuck in neutral. Hmm. I say it's stuck in neutral because, as you can see, the document is not going away. It's been 13 years since the commission presented its final report. And people who would like to see, uh, to see it die naturally or go hmm. away, they are disappointed because it's not happening, you know, every now and then, you know, it just is, you know, it's like, it's not going away. This document is not going away. But in the meantime, it is not being implemented either. So that's why I say it is stuck in neutral. It's not going forward. It's not going backward. But notwithstanding though, there is still good news because the international community has been working around uh, the issue of, of, of impunity and accountability for Liberia. So while the international community is encouraging the government to consider the full implementation of the TRC report, but they are now waiting for them. Finally, if I mean, if you, I mean, you know, all these trials that have been going on, uh, you know, in Europe and, and in the United States, they use the, the TRC is being used yeah. as the bedrock to, you know, to make the case for why these people need to be tried. So while it, <clears throat> Liberians are pussyfooting about uh, implementing the recommendations, some members of the international community are moving ahead in, in starting, uh, you know, a prosecution already of, of people named in the report. And that's why we are here tonight. We're going to talk about one of those persecution that's uh, Mr. Kunte Kamara. But talking about like um, the recommendation of war crime court, what is the idea or what is the the top, what are the top of the TROC when it comes to war crimes code? Is it record when it say these are recommended for war crimes code? War crimes code where and how? Well, we're, we're actually hoping at the time we did the recommendations, we were actually hoping and we, we still do hope that the war crimes trials really will really, really take place in Liberia, even though we see some of it taking place outside of Liberia, you know, in, the, uh, in parts of uh, member countries of the international community but we're still trying to be hopeful that it will take place in Liberia on Liberian soil so that the victims can, can, you know, can have the day. Um, we hope it will happen or 
if not Liberia, maybe it can take place somewhere that's closer to home, that brings it closer to home, like maybe Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone had a war crime yeah. spot, or maybe uh, Senegal or, or, or Ghana or somewhere closer. But it, we, we're hoping that it will happen at home or close to home so that um, so that accountability is actually uh, is, is felt amongst Liberians. Because right now, Liberians, even though they welcome these international trials, but you know some Liberians will still argue that well, but they're not trying them in Liberia. You know, our people give different layers of excuses for why you know the, the way they see things. So uh, it is our hope that maybe it, it 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 will happen. We hope it will. One of those who always talk against the TRC, anytime the name TRC is called, he's kind of jittery. I want to play you a clip of uh, Senator Prince White Johnson. A few years ago, about his thoughts about the TRC. When you want to build a house, you should count the cost. Meaning what? Meaning when I decided to put my life on the line with a great sons and daughters of Nimba to liberate themselves from the yoke of oppression, from the oppressive and diabolical regime. We were prepared for any eventuality. I'm glad that we are free. We are totally free. We were, we were, we were marked for total extermination, destruction of Nimba and the people. Now we are free. So whoever wants to bring Walk around call to hell with you, to hell with you. Go and bring it. I'm prepared to face the music. Now, Don't stop embarrassing me. Go and bring it. Okay. Don't uh, fool all the day with prick. All the day are coming. I coming. I coming. Go there and all the day prepare for you. Senator Johnson, in the process of the liberation of your county, most of those uh, people calling for the establishment of war crimes feel friend, that you, you, daily, committed, you committed war crimes. Listen to crime me, against humanity. have a daily violent killing people, and Nimba County is, is, is declared a, a dangerous zone, a Magibi dangerous zone, Maserato dangerous zone. Why can't we keep our daily mouth closed for war crime court and think about how we will save our people? So we talk about, that's one of the uh, lawmakers saying we should keep our bleep mouth closed on this TRC. And uh, according to what you said, these are the people that are supposed to be a check on the executive to implement the TRC. Again, where are we with this, with this kind of mindset coming from lawmakers? Yeah, um, absolutely. So now you see why the... Um, the drafters of the TRC Act, you see why they uh, put certain uh, provisions in place. For example, they say make recommendations, but under the same token, uh, they say all recommendations are binding because they predicted some of these things, because they've seen some of these things, because they have the experience, they had the TRC experience because, you know, a lot of them work with other TRCs before the Liberian TRC, so they know that a society coming from war, especially a society like the Liberian society that is so polarized, they know that a lot of people and a lot of things will slip through the crack. And they know. So this is why they, 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 they put together a strong act to protect you know, the, the, the process and to, to protect the work of the commission. But let me just say here, obviously, um, uh, Senator Johnson, of course, I mean, for me, I would just think that it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the ranting of a scared man uh, because nobody is going to just be a senator cursing out like that, you know, and carrying on like that. But um, I just want to say this. We, we, we do understand and we know we were there during the war and we saw what happened with Nimba and the people of Nimba and we have been um, empathetic towards what happened to Nimba. We know that. But it is completely misguided mm. that Prince Johnson continue to, um, to, 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 to pray upon tribal sentiment of the people from Nima. For example, Prince Johnson did not even stay a good two months in Nima County 
when when he and, and Taylor cross over in you know into into Nima from the Arab coast, he he quickly broke away from the NPFL and formed the Independent National uh, Patriotic from the INPFL, and he found himself on Kawa on Kawa base. So basically, he was on Kawa base in charge of Johnsonville across the bridge <laughs> and all those areas, and the people. People, the people that people like me are concerned about, okay, are not people who took guns and they went out to fight. Yes, you know, we're sorry, any death is, is not good. But when, when people engage in certain activities, like certain career choice or certain, you know, profession, they know what comes with it. Like me, I'm a journalist, I'm a human rights advocate, women's rights advocate. So I know that engaging the public, sometimes everybody will not like me. People may even tell lies and stuff. I deal with it, with it every day. Dennis, you know, everybody wants my head. So, you know, I'm prepared, I'm, you know, I, I deal with and, it. And Masa, that's, that's, that's one of the things I want to ask you. I, I really, how does it feel? First of all, you give us an update on the TRC. What's about the TRC commissioners, those former commissioners? What is everybody up to? And, and I'm saying that not, I'm not placing the responsibility of uh, calling for war crime coach on the shoulders of the TRC commissioners or the former commissioners. I'm only asking to see what they are doing because every time there are issues around TRC, I reach out to you and you are the one in the media. What are the rest of the people doing? Okay, but let, let me just say this. With all due honesty to former TRC commissioners and even staff of the TRC, um, it is not it's not necessarily the work or the job of the TRC commissioners to implement the report. I agree. Okay, so but because we are Liberians. And uh, we, we want to see it happen because we know it would be good for Liberia. Now we were all different uh, commissioners. We all came from different backgrounds. Like, like me, my, my career choices and my, my profession in life uh, makes me, puts me out there in the public eye. So I'm, I'm brave, you know, I, you know, I'm brave enough. I, I can take on the issues. I really don't care. People have aligned me in the most horrible ways. But, you know, that's just who I am, my personality and my, you know, career choice. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a journalist, I'm a clinical social worker, I'm a women's human rights advocate. So, and then I was also the media commissioner on the TRC. And so I was advocating and doing these things before I joined the TRC. That's my nature. And I've been to school for some of these things. So it would be natural that I will continue the, the, the advocacy. Not that other commissioners don't, you know, I'm, we're in touch, we have our chat room, we're in touch with each other, we discuss these things. You saw last year, August, when the national legislature, led by Prince Johnson and Commander Wiese, when they try again, when President Weir uh, um, wrote them, which he shouldn't have done, by the way, when he wrote them, asking them to give him advice on the way forward for the implementation of the TRC, they decided Mr. Commander Wiese calls himself the transitional justice man at the legislature. They decided that they will create a transitional justice institute a commission, a transitional justice commission, and that commission would actually investigate the work of the TRC and they will come. Mm -hmm. So they were trying to do this bogus uh, uh, thing to completely just, you know, throw away the work of the TRC. Mm -hmm. So commissioners were concerned. They called me, we discussed, and I went to town. I went to Liberia and commissioners met. I think, you know, we all met and we came up with a very strong statement. And, and, and we issued a statement, but of course I was the, you know, the spokesperson. So other commissioners are more quiet. Other commissioners by virtue of their professional training and career, you know, they're more quiet and stuff, but they're also very strong in the background <coughs> and they know the issue and stuff. So, you know, like I said, it's, you know, my nature, my career, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm outspoken. So, and I'm passionate about the issue of, of justice for Liberia. So this is why I make myself available to explain the process to Liberians and other people so that they understand what happened. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are just joining us, this is focused on Liberia. Between the headlines, my guest is Ms. Massa Emilio Washington, former TRC commissioner, also a career journalist and human rights advocate. Massa, you were in uh, Paris the other day, uh, invited to uh, be a witness, a professional witness, in the trial of Kunti Kamara. There you are. And you see some of your limo fighters on the side there. So that trial went on. So let me start by asking you uh, to, to just tell me what was your role in that trial and what was the atmosphere like in the courtroom? Okay, so I was asked to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm assisting in the background as a 
resource person for you know these trials because of course I lived the conflict and then I reported on the conflict and from from different angles as a Liberian woman as a journalist I attended a lot of the, the uh, you know peace conferences in the sub region and uh, I was a member of civil society advocating to end the war and then then I went on the TRC so all of these experiences uh, puts me in a unique position of knowledge I know you know a lot i'm not boasting that i know everything but i know a lot i know a little bit more than maybe the ordinary liberian would know about what happened in liberia and uh so based upon uh based upon that uh i've members of the international communities who are helping liberians um get accountability and justice you know they will ask me and to, to assist in in some of these issues so i was asked to come to to france to testify as an expert witness not as a witness directly against Kundi uh, or Kamara Kunteke, aka Kunteke, uh, because I did not know him. We had heard of him during the TRC process, so minimally, I did not know him. So I did not see his atrocities. So I did not go to testify, you know, as an eyewitness on his uh, crimes at the time. But I went to testify as an expert witness, meaning that I know the situation of Liberia, I know the history of Liberia, or at least I know contemporary history of Liberia. I know the history of the war years, post-war years, transitional justice, the fight for peace, you know, advocacy, the different warring factions, because I reported as a journalist, I broke the news for several, I broke the news for the Carter Camp massacre. I was a first responder at the Lucian Church massacre. So uh, I went to the, the Dupo Road massacre when it happened. So, um, so I was, you know, a better place to serve as expert witness to help the, the international partners who are prosecuting these people on behalf of us make their case and strengthen their case. So it was very interesting when I got there. Um, you know, it, it was very interesting uh, to see this guy. Um, he, of course, he denied everything, but he didn't deny that he was, he was he was a rebel fighter. He didn't deny that he had authority. But what he did was he tried to separate himself from the exact atrocities. So the times, uh, the, the period from 1993 to 94, they talk about, he said, yes, he was with Ulimo, they were fighting, but he was not in a particular town, which was Foya, because the, the, the trial basically focused on the atrocities in Foya because that's where he was as a commander. And eyewitnesses who came from Foya Lofa County, who were there and who experienced uh, the gross violations of the human rights by Kundi and his men, some of them were flown in from Liberia to go and testify, and it was it was riveting. It was riveting. One of the witness during her testimony, she almost fainted. She collapsed. The the the, the, the president of the court had to um, suspend the, the, the trial that day until the next day. Actually, they have they have judges, but they refer to the chief just the chief judge as the president. So you had three judges and you had six jurors. Uh, you know, it's interesting because the, the jurisprudence is a little bit different from the Liberian Jewish, jurisprudence that uh, that you know that that draw from the American jurisprudence over there. The judges and the and the and the and the, and the jurors they all sit together and they ask you question. Mm -hmm. When I when when they called me to testify, I was completely shocked and and completely shocked and surprised that when I stood, they asked me to narrate my own story, what I know about Liberia as a journalist. After I spoke, then they started to ask me questions, but everybody was asking me questions. The three judges was asking me questions, and the six jurors were also asking me questions. <clears throat> Plus, the prosecution uh, or, 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 or defense, the defense counsels were asking me questions, and of course, the prosecution mm -hmm. was asking me questions. So it was really interesting. So, so Masa, how did uh, Kunte Kamara, how did he get uh, to the court? Because well, I know there are a lot of former wall of commanders, right? So why country Kamara? How did this happen? Okay, that led to the trial. That, that's a, that's an interesting uh, uh, question because people think that everybody who fought the war or everybody who allegedly committed crimes or gross violation of human rights, people are really thinking that all of these people should come to trial or. All of them should come to trial. If it doesn't happen, then the process is not fair. But we know that it is impossible. All, for example, all Nazi perpetrators who slaughtered more than 6 million Jews, who slaughtered minorities, including Blacks and Gypsies, 
all of them they didn't come to try because it was impossible. It is impossible anywhere in the world under the sun that when you have a, 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 a conflict, that the Liberian conflict that degenerated into several portions where you had about, about five, six, seven different warring factions, mm -hmm. okay, that every single uh, alleged perpetrator will be able to try is impossible. So what they're trying to do is, it's going to be as a, as per, you know, per case basis, they're going to look at the major warlords. And uh, we have the major warlords listed in the TRS report. Then they start looking at the chain of command. Now, someone like Kundi, Liberians abroad are also trying to fight for justice for themselves. So someone like Kundi, people actually <clears throat> uh, reported him. People say, hey, this guy will remember him. He was in Foya Lofa County in between 1993 and 1994. And this is what he did. He beheaded people. He killed people. He did this. this. And so they, they reported and, and made a case. And then the international community and their partners, they started investigating. They went to Liberia. They, they, they sent the investigators to Liberia to investigate. And they were able to find victims, real first-hand victims, not only secondary victims, but from first-hand victims. And so, so people that come the People like uh, Ali Aliyo um, Ali Kosha, who is who, you know, was tried in Switzerland and found guilty, but he's not appealing his his his, his, his sentence. And, uh, and other people, um, I say kind of here in 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 Philadelphia. Yes, unfortunately for them, some of the victims are around, and some of the victims mm -hmm. are seeing them, and the victims are quietly speaking out. One of the things that President Barack Obama did for the world to enhance uh, human rights before he left office was that he set up, he established a, 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 uh, a department that would deal with international uh, uh, human rights, gross international violations of international human rights that took place because Barack yeah. Obama said he did not want the United States to be used as a safe haven for people who have perpetrated crimes against other people outside of the United States and they come here to, to hide and then to enjoy, you know, uh, the sweat of this country. So uh, the former uh, Solicitor General at the time, Eric Holder, he was in charge of that program. And I was one of those who was invited when they decided to put that department together to reach out to, to people in the different communities. And they reached out to me, they invited me, and I went there on three different locations. We sat there, they heard from us where we came from, what we wanted to see. And there were people from Eritrea, people from all over the world, especially in trouble areas in, 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 in Africa, Sierra Leone. There were people from, from um, Mali and everywhere. And I was there. I saw Patrick Twan there at two of the meetings. I attended three of the meetings and Patrick Twan was at two of the meetings. He, he was also invited. So we were part of the um, initial uh, planning committee, a steering committee that you know, helped to you know, put together the framework for that department so that they'll be able to track down any war criminal, anybody who has violated the rights of other people and you come here. And that department, they have a hotline. In fact, they have two numbers and we have been, I'm not going to lie, we have been passing that numbers around. I put it on my Facebook page before when it first started, I give it to people, I send it to people inbox. I tell them, if you see anybody who you know, who raped people in Liberia, who opened pregnant women's stomach, who beheaded people, anybody who engaged in the gross violations of other people's human rights, if as long as you know it's the proof, <clears throat> this is the number, call, you know, or this is the email address, send the information there and they will check that person out. If that person is there in America, you know, they will check that person out. Sure. Not accept sure. the information you give, it's not because there have been times where people have sent in the names of individuals and they check them out. And those people were just, some of them were just associates, just affiliating, hanging with rebels. No, that's not what they're talking about. They're talking about the people who really, really did some horrible stuff. And they're here in America, enjoying their lives. While the mm -hmm. victims, some of the victims, the ones who are alive at home, wallowing in sorrow, living in abject poverty, and they have mental health or, or PTSD, bipolar disorder from the, from the trauma that <laughs> people are, are, are created for them when they ab abuse their human rights. That, so that's how we're getting them. So the trial of Kunte Kamara ended and he was sentenced. What exactly was he sentenced for? So this is the first time 
if you notice the other trials that took place like in Philadelphia here, uh, Thomas Royal trial that took place, it was on immigration violation. Jungle Jabba's trial that took place, it was on immigration violation, even though they tie in uh, the atrocities they committed in Liberia to make the case strong because nobody goes to jail for 35 years for just violating, you know, the immigration. So the, um, the role, the negative role they play in the war, uh, in, in the destruction of Liberia, play a huge role in, in them being convicted in, in, in jail. You know, Mr. Woyu was uh, awaiting sentencing. After his trial, he was found guilty. He was awaiting sentencing. He had anchor bracelet on his leg. And unfortunately, when COVID came, he was one of the first victims of COVID. And uh, the way Mr. Woyu was identified was the anchor bracelet on his leg because when they, when they heard information that Mr. Woyu had died, they started looking for him and they went to all the, the morgues, all the, all, the, all the coroner offices to look for Mr. Woyu and were able to identify him by his anchor bracelet on his, on his leg. So, um, so those who violated growth, those people who are in, you know, who were, like I said, the, the war you cases, the war you case and, and, uh, and uh, Junko Jabba and another person was tied into the immigration. Mm. But Kunde, Kunde came in France, the case that just ended in October. This is the first time, okay, that, in fact, this is the second time because of Alia Kushad also experienced similar thing. So right. people that Kunde, Kunde K and Alia Kushad were tried directly for war crimes, uh, uh, gross violations of human rights that they committed in Liberia. So you can see how it is gradually now, the international community around here is becoming more in tune now to the depth of the, of the, of the depravity that happened in Liberia. So before, <clears throat> you know, oh, this person, even though they are a warlord from Liberia, but you know, we don't want to be bothered with all the messy part of the uh, of the war crimes trial. So we're just going to stick to the right. violations of, of immigration. But now you see they're graduating now. They actually are prosecuting people now who actually committed gross violations of human rights in Liberia. So this is a good day for Liberians. It, it, it makes us happy because even though back home our people don't want to do anything about it, but at least some of our international partners are beginning to directly do something about it. So it's a good day, it's hopeful. So this this talk about the room statue, that this thing started, our war was before uh, 2006 when these things came into play. That's that's not true. I don't want to uh, ask you about transitional justice question, but you, you, you stay around these things because there is a notion that uh, this whole room statue came into effect after the Labyrinth Civil War. So you cannot try anyone for atrocities committed during the Labyrinth Civil War. That's a lie, as we see in the cases of Kunti Kamara and Ali Kosha. Yes, exactly. So I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not going to sit here and uh, yeah. and start messing with the lawyer, pretend I'm a lawyer, but you know that is that is a lie. And then secondly, the, 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 the statue for torture has no limitation. There is no statue of limitation for torture. So yeah. all these people, all these people like, like uh, Kunde K mm -hmm. and all these people who they're now grabbing and, uh, and trying them and convicting them and giving them the maximum uh, 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 sentencing, they all committed torture because it's, there's no way you're killing somebody, you commit torture. So even if people want to, to uh, you know, fool themselves and, 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 you know, and talk around the room statue, but guess what? There is no statue of limitation for torture. And right. torture is considered an element of war crimes. And, and Masa, is it because these guys were in those countries? Is that why? Because there are people that we know in Liberia committed those same crimes. Yeah, it's because this is what happened. Uh, don't forget. Um, so the, 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 the working of the international community in the United Nations is not to start a conflict with another country. They want to avoid Okay. Or, or disagreement as much as possible. So they want to give member states the respect, of course, naturally, and then also recognize their sovereignty. Liberia is a sovereign country. So even though the, in, the United Nations can, you know, can enforce, you know, enforce compliance for certain things, but notwithstanding the one for Liberia to do it herself. So that way it is more accepting. It is more accepting rather than force. So- yeah, 
Yeah, exactly. But then because our <laughs> our president before Eddie Selly didn't do anything about it, George Weah doesn't seem to have the political will, goodwill to do anything about it. And you see the country, the leadership of the country is back with perpetrator. You saw Prince Johnson insulting and cussing Jess and all of that. So you yeah. know they're not going to do anything about it anytime soon. So what happens then? Then the international community, then they will do what they're doing now. Th thank you. That uh, let's segue to another ex rebel commander that's Momo Jimba, aka Bulldog, as you can see in this photo. So, Momo Jimba, the uh, former rebel commander, and also AD came to warlord current president Charles Taylor, died recently. According to the TROC, or uh, Miss Washington, what? Did the TRC record about Momo Jiba? Well, we recorded uh, we recorded a lot of um, things that he allegedly did, you know. And uh, for example, one of it was um, he he was Momo Jiba was engaged in Liberian people don't know this, and this dude has passed away. And of course, as usual, they on Facebook and you know singing his praises and they're talking about him like he was a regular normal person like you and me who didn't do anything wrong. Momo Jiba was involved in the Carter Camp massacre. He was one of the, the masterminds, planner and executor of the Carter Camp massacre. Momo Jiba was involved in the Phoebe uh, the Phoebe hospital massacre where innocent people were killed for nothing. This same Momo Jiba was involved in in ordering the execution of people in in, in Lofa County, and this guy was a was a he was a vicious he was a vicious killer. He was an assassin. He was the same one who was a mastermind and killer, a mean killer of, of Francois Massacre. You know, Francois Massacre was the leader of the uh, Lofa Defense Force, also, of, of, also a rebel leader, and he was heading the Lofa Defense Force. And uh, the story with Fr Francois Massacre is that I can speak to that because when we went to Lofa County. For the hearings of Lofa County, they actually carry us to where uh, some of the, the, the local people there actually took us to where uh, Francois was actually uh, executed. So after Taylor won the elections, and he has said he would be president of all Liberia, but before Taylor won the election, remember what Banga felt. It was a coalition forces that worked together. They called it the CRC coalition forces. Uh, and in that coalition force was Francois Massacre, of uh, uh, Doki, Sid, no. Deke, and, and a couple of them. Oh, and when yeah. Taylor, when Taylor gave his, when Taylor gave his press conference, I can remember vividly because I covered it. When Taylor gave a press conference, when when when, when Banga fell, he said, "All of you, who this, who did this, who were part of this, who were responsible for this, I would get even even if you're going your mommy better, I will come there for you." He said this. It was a public statement. So you saw how they dealt with Doki. So Taylor becomes president and he says to them, well, you know, I'm president of all Liberia now. Uh, I'm going to reach out to everybody. Let's form an inclusion or government of inclusion. So he names Francois Massacre, who is the rebel leader for the Lofa Defense Force, who fought the NPF bitterly, who was also part of the fall of, 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 of Banka Taylor Stronghold. So Taylor names him youth, um, a youth and sports uh, minister. And then during that process, uh, Taylor says to him, they were having, uh, you know, uh, people, they were, you know, asking him to go and take some relief, some yeah. relief, uh, some relief items to, uh, to, you know, starving people in Lofa County, go and take some food bags or rice food and all the kind of stuff. Okay. And he gets on the plane and who are those that accompany him? Momo Jiba and a couple of them, some of, some others that named, we were told, but I'm not going to name them here. So, but Momo Jiba, one of those, it was Jiba's operation. Taylor had Commission that, and when they when they, they got that the helicopter they used, where the helicopter landed, the airstrip, people took us there. They took commissioners there. They took us there and they showed us. They said this is where the helicopter landed, and in fact, two of the persons who actually accompanied us there were former fighters of the NPFL, who came to testify in the Lufa hearing. So they took us there too, and they said this is where the helicopter landed, and they told us how Francois Massacre got killed when he got mm -hmm. down. And they walk in immediately, those boys, you know, they sandwich him. One person on the side, on either side of him, another person walking in front of him. But, you know, he's the big man. He's the minister. He didn't pay attention. And Momo Chiba is walking right behind him, walk up behind him, and just put a gun to his brains and blew it out. That's how Francois got killed. And then they took his body, put it on the plane, and then they, they say, oh, 
he, he got shot, you know, people were shooting at them and all kind of thing. So that's how he got eliminated. You saw how Taylor got even with, with Doki, with, with Samuel Doki. You know, uh, uh, Doki was on his way to Nima County for the wedding of his niece. His wife was with him, his, you know, some family members, and they killed all of them in the most horrible way and then put their bodies on fire. So Momo Jiba was a vicious killer. Mm -hmm. He was an assassin. He was an assassin. He was a warlord. He was evil. So to see Liberians talking about him, I even read it that the newspaper, you know, uh, article about Momo Jiba. I'm like, initially I was not going to say anything. But then when you see this erroneous narrative and version of who this person was making the airways, and you kind of figure, say, well, for those of us who know the truth, if we don't say something, then whatever is being, uh, is being the distributor becomes history and it becomes yeah. the, the truth and the information because yeah. our young children, our grandchildren and, and posterity. So based upon that, that's when I decided where I will speak out. Because even the newspapers, when they were when they when they are writing about Momo's Jiba's uh, uh, death, even though he died naturally, they only talk about him being um, a bodyguard to Charles Taylor, and later on, I think deputy police director for something or or, or whatever it was, and they only stop there. But they make it appear like oh, he was this uh, this tough guy, he was this trained uh, you know a uh, guy, and he was a security guy. He was no to do. He, he was trained as a killer. This is why no, they no. need bulldog, and we know what a bulldog is. The bulldogs are trained to be vicious and, and stuff. So that's what he was. He was a vicious uh, a, a human being. He was evil. So people should not praise him. I am not happy that he died because everybody would die. That is something that is waiting for all of us. But for this is what I read. This is what I read in the TRC report. Just a piece of it. Say March two thousand one, the summary execution of fourteen persons in Konya, Lofa County, on the orders of Momo Jiba. Jiba ordered the execution after the governor of Liberia recaptured the town from the Liberian United for Reconciliation and Democracy law. He also planned and executed the death of Francois Massacre, the youth and sports minister at the time. So when I see this and uh, I see on, as you said correctly, on Facebook, people are wishing, you know, rest in peace. And yes, we have the culture of, you know, being nice to somebody who died. But this thing about war laws, especially when they die, okay, is it because uh, we are forgiven people or is it because we don't know what they did or we just want it to slide? Has people say in Liberia, you know, I have heard different views about the war. Some say, oh, we are all part of it. We all did it. Some say, you know, oh, we are a close knit society, so you can't touch anybody. Oh, man, this is not going to bring the people back, so let's just go. What is your general idea about why we respond to these killers the way we do? You know, Dennis, I think it's a mixture of, of all of those things that you alluded to and then uh, even some more. One, I think I hope people generally were just a playful group of people. We're not serious about, about a lot of things. We just I play for a group of people. Come for, I mean, come my example. Look at these um, these warlords, these killers who have distressed people, families, and stuff. They're all in Liberia. They're all in public office. The rich people, and they're not even quiet. They're boastful. They're arrogant. You know, they 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 they're sticking it up to the victims. You know, they they're laughing in their face. They're beating their chest. But then the same Liberians who are so victimized by this individual, they walk around every day. In fact, they go to public places, they see them there. They go to the supermarket, they see them there. You know, I'm not saying that people should uh, initiate violence as a way of trying to get even with what happened uh, with, with these people. But my thing is, I think other society by now, they would have had a massive demonstration and shut that whole place down to send a clear message that no, we want accountability. These people must answer for what they've done. But I, and then too, Liberians are just a unique people. Liberians are complacent. I think, uh, you know, I don't know how much a threat Liberians will be because the worst has happened already. I don't think there's any more worse that can happen to Liberia. So what are people afraid of? You know, if you come out and speak, Dennis, when I was in France, people, when people saw and heard I was in France, people from Liberia and also the United States were sending me texts. Oh, Masa, thank you so much. Oh, and I, I want to give you my story. Susan so person killed my this. Susan so person killed my dad. This person is Susan so. Are they going to try them too? Can you please talk to the people so they to try this person? And I'm, I'm reading these things 
and it was just completely shocking. I'm like, oh my God, I don't believe this. Y'all got all this first hand information. You were standing right there when they slaughtered your relative and you waiting for other people, you know, mm -hmm. to pick up your case, especially at this time mm -hmm. when human perpetrators are free to speak. What is wrong with Liberians themselves? You know, coming out to say, hey, go to the media because so social media has now revolutionized the, the media landscape in Liberia. You can go, you know, and explain, hey, this person killed my person, so you you you, you can go on air in Morovia, you can go to the newspaper. You know, the more people push for accountability and the more people are not quiet, the more people speak about what has happened to them, the more you box and corner these warlords who are boasting and they have no sympathy for the victims. But because Liberians are so complacent and because, you know, we, you know, it's like Liberians have amnesia. You know, it's like yeah. they have amnesia. They, you know, don't want to do any. They always want for other people to do it for them. That that mentality, that psychological mentality. Other people will always do it for them. Oh, the international community should come and deal with your economic crimes. The international community should come and, 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 and clean up Marufia that is so trashy. Oh, the international community should come and prosecute your 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 uh, uh, your perpetrators who 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 rape your mom and rape your sister. Then what are you supposed to do as a Liberian? Who and need to straighten up your country? Who need a better country? What are you supposed to do? Yeah, and, and Master, look at this number, right? And I got this from the TRC report about violations. Sixty-three thousand eight hundred forty-three. Forty-one percent of those violations were by the NPFL, twelve percent by LERD, eleven percent by LPC, and so on and so forth. Is it that librarians are not aware of these violations? Do they disbelieve them or? Like they don't care. Liberians are aware by now, because don't forget, a lot of Liberians were in the war where all these places took place. I mean, where all these things took place, and we've been talking this forever and ever. You know, every now we say, "Oh, I will not keep quiet. I will keep talking. I will keep talking." Liberians are aware, but I think you know, like we, we like we're discussing a lot of things are happening, and I think one too is that um, Liberians are so poor now, and I think if if this They've lost hope. They are hopeless. When I say hopeless, not in a negative way, you know, I think at this time where they see from government to government, they see the perpetrators and, and they see the people who have hurt them and have violated them in the most horrible ways. These are the leaders over and over and over and nothing is being done about it. And they are, they are voting for some of these people. I think what is also killing Liberians, Dennis, is that this thing with, with, with loyalty to, to, to travel sentiments and, and, and whatnot. Everybody got a perpetrator. Hmm. I mean, you will not believe it. Some of the most, some of the li Liberians that you admire who are educated, mm -hmm. you know, you like them, you admire them, decent Liberians. Some of them will actually take you on if you, if you talk about, you know, a perpetrator who they like for whatever reason. Maybe um, somebody killed, let me just say something. Maybe Samuel Doe killed this person's mother. Or maybe a uh, 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 Prince Johnson, you know, killed this person, uh, you know. Do. But if Samuel Doe was a dictator and 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 you know and and and, and, and you know a perpetrator you know caused the death of you know people or people, and then Prince Johnson Prince Johnson killed Samuel Doe. People, uh, Prince Johnson becomes the hero for other people because Prince uh, Samuel Doe persecuted the people. But then they're not looking, they're not separating issues. Okay, so yeah, so Prince Johnson. Prince John, uh, Samuel Doe probably kill your mother, kill your father. What's it? This is just an example. And Prince Johnson kill Samuel Doe. Fine. But then what's about the other innocent people that Prince Johnson killed that had nothing to do with war? What's about the market women? What's about T. Comse Rabadin? What's about, you know, uh, uh, what's about Marco Do? All these different people. What's about the bearers? You know? So how do you, as an individual, feel? How can Prince Johnson be your hero? How can you attack someone like me? Because I say Prince Johnson they should go to war crimes court. Because Prince yeah. Johnson killed Samuel Doe, because Samuel Doe killed your relative. Yes, but then come on. So everybody got a perpetrator. You yeah. know, everybody got a perpetrator love. So they psychologically support these people. And this is what uh people like Prince Johnson depends on to be beating their chest and to even be cursing out and, and you know and taunting people like me. You know. Yeah. He, he called your name one time. You know, he calls my name all the time. Prince oh. Johnson. <laughs> Prince Johnson is in love with my name. Either he's in love with my name or he's in love with me, but he calls my name all the time. Prince Johnson get ready sometimes, Dennis. He goes to his church. Depending on how he feels that day, he will preach about me. I will be his sermon. Yeah. 
mm. or other TRC Commissioner John Stuart will be his sermon. So, no, my name that's super for Prince Johnson. Prince Johnson call my name all the time. And, and one thing I've observed, uh, Miss Washington, is maybe because of the political leader or someone that we support, whatever decision they take, because I've seen a lot of people who were clamoring for war crimes court. But as long as their political leader or their presidential candidate make one decision or the other, yeah, everybody keeps quiet. So I'm saying, are we really still? Let me play you a clip of, of Mr. Alexander coming was right here on Focus on LeBron. We asked because he selected his team comprising people that I mentioned in the TRC report. Let me play for you what uh, Mr. Cummings said. In a list of people that will come to support us. There has been actually an outcry against the, especially certain people on the list. And here, here are a few of them because of the role, right? So there have been this outcry. I remember uh, when uh, your former chief of office staff, Mr. Isaac Vatoba, co-authored a book in which uh, he quoted then celebrity George Weir as making some remarks. Few people got in the streets to demonstrate, and based on that, you fire Mr. Topa from his job. Based on the outcry from the people about these uh, alleged war crimes perpetrators, will you be taking similar actions? So, one, you use the key word alleged, and two, um, because you keep sort of, I think, in my mind, repeating the same point. People are volunteering to come and help and support us. Um, we are building this big tent of Liberians. Liberians are made up of good people and bad people. Most countries in the world, Dennis, that have rule of law, uh, where people who disobey the law, their consequences, most of the citizens follow the law. I mentioned the same Liberians. If you take them out of Liberia, you put them in countries where the law is enforced, they follow the rules, they follow the law. When we change the system in Liberia, many of these people who are alleged to be bad, I believe will follow the rules, follow the law. And if the evidence leads to the allegations being true, they will bear the consequences of it. I'm saying that to you. I'm saying, said that I bring people publicly. I've issued statements that in fact recently, and I'm very clear and deliberate about that. But we cannot win with just the good people in Liberia. We gotta win with all Liberians. And I wanted to be president of everybody, not just a few people. But we cannot win all right. with just the good people. We cannot win with just the good people, all right? Uh, these people are volunteering. We have good people, we have bad people. Now, oh, I, I want to be president of both good and bad. We're building a good tent. In fact, it's alleged, the key word there is alleged. These people have not been convicted. So if the issue of war crimes are being nuanced this way, and you and you see people that support Mr. Cummings will no longer be doing the same way they have been calling for war crime court. Listening to that video, what, what do you think? What, what do you make of it? Let me ask you this way. In the first place, uh, it's, it's amazing. I, I did watch that video before. And uh, it's, 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 it's amazing. When I watched that video, I just, um, I have a smirk on my face because um, we've heard that song before. We've heard that song before. I remember when President Eddie Johnson Sirleaf came to the opening of the TRC, she inaugurated the commission. She opened the, the, the hearings. When she came to the opening of the hearings, her statement was a powerful statement. And commissioners left feeling so happy. So, oh, thank God, she was ready to work with the commission. She was ready. And she said, one of the, the points in her statement that I remember vividly was that, those who have committed atrocities against the people of Liberia, rest assured, you will face justice. You will account for what you've done. Okay? So we heard that before. She did nothing about it. So every time you hear people, and then also even with the, with the CDC now, we are in her boys' campaign on the basis of 
the work around school. In fact, or, or mobile model, they had caskets. They had caskets at one time that they were uh, marching in the streets of, of Liberia with, and the caskets were supposed to be symbolic of, of victims who died in the war. And everywhere was, was, was war crime school. Even Weir himself made several statements taking issue with Ellen for not wanting to implement the TRC report. But they've been there already. How long has the CDC been in power? Five years, right? The CDC been in power for five years and they're looking to go for re-elections. Do you see them implement the TRC report? Do you see them talking about implementing the report? Dennis, are you listening to me? Very well. Can very, you hear me? Yeah, very well. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so you know, they say it every time you look, every time you hear politicians talking around issues like that. I would be president for all Liberians. I would do this, this and so. You know straight. You have heard that song before, even if, if, they, if they transpose the lyrics, but you've heard that song before, at least you know the tune. You know strip. When they get there, they will do nothing. Because at the end mm -hmm. of the day, they will come with all these excuses. Right now, some of the supporters are saying, oh, why should we implement a TRC report when LNJ didn't do it? And, and, so, and, that's the, and that's the thing, right? Because those of those of us who support these politicians, it's like we don't we have no sense of our own. Yeah. Whatever it says, that that's what well, they say, that's where we go. So it's the it, emperor's it, new it's, 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 it's the emperor's new clothes. It's the emperor's new clothes. So this is what they do, and it's so sad because we Liberians, we create, we create monsters out of our leaders. Okay, we create monsters of all of our leaders. So here, Mr. Cummings has come. He's trying to, to campaign. He's trying to do this. He wants to be president. And he's making some mistakes. And we've seen these mistakes before. We've seen other leaders before him and current leaders make the same mistakes. And he's making these mistakes. But then in the meantime, his supporters are in your face. They, you know, they take issue with you. They disrespect you. And all of a sudden, they think you hate Mr. Cummings. The but I know I know some of them that were that were actually going to DC for war crimes court. Now you don't hear that or anymore. People were, or people were insulting me, Dennis. Remember, people were insulting me. Oh, Master Washington, that fake. She she want the TRS report to be implemented. Imagine my own work, my own report that I worked so hard for. Okay, all of a sudden, these so-called advocates that came down don't even know that they, they're here from the tail. Don't even know what was going on. They are more advocate for the TRS than me. You understand the, the, the irony of it? But today, Mr. Cummings is making all these mistakes, bringing, bringing perpetrators on board, you know, people who were involved in Glaro Massacre, in, in, in Glaro Grand or River G County, because commissioners went to Glaro River G County. We saw the bones of more than 600 or more than 200 people that they have massacred in the town of Glaro. Glaro is a town that all the way in the, in, in the forest, you know, you got to get in the canoe to go into the town. When we got there, the people took us to the, to the bush path and show us all the bones that they have preserved. We wrote the UN and told them, "Say y'all go to Glaro District and preserve the district and preserve the bones." Glaro uh, uh, people that Dan and who were sitting down, Dan and were sitting down. Dan and were part of the of the organization of of, of this Gary guy who attacked the 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 the, 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 the uh, who, who carried war to the Arabs. Dan and were sitting in that meeting, planning it on behalf of the MPFL. We got a name on the list. All of them who were in that meeting. And then so you take somebody like Dan Mariah and you're flaunting him in our faces, Louis Brown then, Daniel Chair, then you're flaunting our, them in our faces and you say we shouldn't say anything. We say something, we become the bad people. Your people insult us. You know, they disrespect us, even some of them who's supposed to be our friends, but they forgot that just yesterday I was, I was uh, you know, speaking on behalf of Mr. Cummings with the whole book us or, or document fingering thing. And I still believe that it was all nonsense. You know, so we're gonna speak the truth. Mr. Cummings is making a mistake, okay? When you see them starting like this, Dennis, Mr. If, if Mr. Cummings gets there, he's not going to implement the TRC recommendations. If it happened, I would be very glad it happened. I will come back on your show and say, Dennis, I thought he was not going to do it, but he did it. Thank you very much, President Cummings. But guess what, Dennis? It's not going to happen because we've seen, we've seen this movie before. Yeah. We've heard this song before. We know this lyric. And it's sad. It is really sad because from politician to politician, from person to person, the hopes of Liberians just continue to be dashed. It's, it's really sad. Where are all the war crimes called advocate? So Mr. Cummings comes out and he's making this kind of mistake. And then all of a sudden it's okay. People are justifying. The people who said they were adding war crimes called uh, 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 advocates, 
today they are making the case for why Mr. Cummings is flaunting people like Louis Brown, people like uh, or, or Demma, right, and all these people. Today they are justifying why these people are okay. But this is what I just said earlier, Dennis, that everybody got the perpetrators that they protect. Everybody got the perpetrators they love. You see, look, advocates are tall order. Some of us been doing advocacy forever and ever, forever and ever. That not today we've been doing it. Advocacy is a tall order. You got to have the passion for it. You got to be truthful at all times. And you got to want to see, you know, a better result. It, it, it is not a fly by night thing. You don't just come and start making laws because you don't like George Weir. So George Weir is president today. You don't like him. So you this big advocate. You say that you cost Weir whole day. You cost Weir my whole day. But then your own people that you support are making the same mistakes. They're following the same path. And then you call yourself, you call yourself an advocate. It's ridiculous. It is called hypocrisy. Thank you. And let me play a short clip from our current vice president. Our country has gone through a very difficult process. Uh, there is still much left to be done. Our country is still not reconciled. I do not think a war crimes code for Liberia will be the best thing. We are a very small country made up of less than maybe four million persons and the interrelatedness of the families are so tight um, if you drag one person to court the families that are attached you know it will just have a ripple effect so ladies and gentlemen this is between the headlines we are speaking with former commissioner massa washington and talking about kunde kamara kunti kamara and Bulldog Momojiba, both notorious rebels who allegedly committed atrocities against fellow Liberians. At this time, we have the phone lines open. The number is on your screen there. 605-313-6004. The code is 791-403-POUND. I think we have a caller on the line. Uh, caller, your name and where you calling from? Hello, Mr. Jai. Uh, this is Elvis calling from Minnesota. Go ahead, Elvis. You're live. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. I really, really, really appreciate this conversation. I've been wanting to ask Ms. Washington, Ms. Washington a few questions. Uh, just quickly on Momo Jiba, like I said, I knew, I knew him personally. You know, when he lived in the Sherman compound area there where they got the new Chinese embassy. I knew him and his family. And just being around the guy, there was a scare, there was a, a real aura when I was a kid at the time. You know, this kind of funny aura about it. You know, he's a likable guy in person, always joking, always joking, but you could tell there was something dark about him. He had some kids from Sierra Leone that was living with him. We used to play football with them, but, you know, there was a rumor around Congo Town that they were killers, you know, there was like some kind of small commander, or whatever you call it. So definitely, you know, we knew he was a bad guy, but like everybody, around him and everybody who knew him we kind of look at him like a rumble kind of guy you know this kind of not you know be but you know we knew something was not right with him but just to miss washington was he recommended for prosecution as one of the people who was who was listed that's the first question and then second the second question that we i remember during the time of the trc it was miss washington and bob bala who was having this interaction with each other and it was miss washington especially Baba had a reservation about whether the PRC would be implemented. You know, he he he, he, st he stated that it was in here in Minnesota, and Ms. Washington was staunch and she was very adamant. Like, yes, we have the right, we have the mandate; it will be implemented. So I want I want to ask her what 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 tenure did she have at that time, or what reliance, like you were saying, Mr. what reliance did she have that the PRC will actually be be implemented? Because she was arguing with him on that point that. It will be implemented, and there's nothing that anybody can do to stop it. But here we are today, 13 years later, it hasn't been implemented. But great conversation. Love Ms. Washington for always building herself for these kind of conversations. Thank you so much for taking my call. Thank you. Let me bring on another call up, Ms. Washington, before you respond. Call up your name and where Dennis, you call. Let me answer so that I don't I don't miss people. Let, you know, let's let's write it down. These guys want to call. Want to? I'll repeat it for you. Don't worry. I'll, I'll repeat it. Go ahead, Mr. Kawi. Hey, how you doing? Uh, hey, how you doing, Miss uh, Washington? Hey, hey, my brother. How are you, sir? It was very important, especially with this mobile Jiva thing. And I saw this on Facebook, and I was really, really, really sad. 
outside because, you know, Liberians, we are very interesting people. You know, here is a man that our work in a routine are committed so many atrocities. Um, Ms. Washington mentioned uh, Francois Massacre. I vividly remember when uh, Francois Massacre and uh, Tom Woyu, Sen Doki, all of them formed the Central Re Revolution Council that captured uh, Banga. Now, if you look at the three guys, they are all dead. And uh, Jiba play a real role in 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 the death of 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 uh, Momo Jiba. Uh, uh, Momo Jiba play a strong role in the death of Fansa Massacre. I saw Momo Jiba when I went to Liberia last March, and he was pathetic. You look at the guy; he was like a crackhead. You know, he was on drugs and stuff. But what I want to say to the librarian people is justice is very important. There is no peace without justice. And to listen to the like of Prince Johnson boasting and all of that is because we empower them to do that. We empower them to do that. The part of the matter is we elect warlords. You know, people come to office and they say, oh, we're going to prosecute our laws. And once they get there, it's a of politics. TDC. TDC was a strong advocate for war crime code. When George Weah got there and he started mingling with uh, uh, Johnson, that was the end of it. Today we are seeing Cummins. Cummins is the guy that I always say, oh, you're doing the same thing over and over, expecting uh, uh, different results. Cummins is now telling us that he has uh, Louis Brown, he has all the guys that were with Taylor. And he's talking about he's bailing a tent. What tent are you bailing that uh, don't have a strong foundation when you have all the guys that are very, very bad in terms of dealing with like black people? So I want to encourage uh, Ms. Washington for what she's doing. Keep doing what you're doing. We support you. We hope that uh, in the long run, we'll have that leader that has the political will to uh, go after these guys. We must okay. leave a true legacy of something in our country. Thank you. Th thank you. Let me bring on Jimmy Eastman. Jimmy, go ahead. You're live. Hey, uh, there's a good show as usual, Mata. Uh, thank you for all your historical information. Uh, but I have a theory about this that I want to run by you. Um, I noticed from old, not, not just be before the war, that Liberians uh, are not used to calling a spade a spade. I think that when we were a real democracy, after Tubman, people were severely punished for seeing the truth. When he got up and talked the truth, uh, a lot of, uh, I mean, the households I grew up in, they saw the, 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 the discrimination and the, and the bad things that were going on against certain groups. And they spoke about it in in the home, but they wouldn't, weren't brave enough to go and speak to the power, speak to power because they had seen what had happened to others who had gotten up. And I've noticed this trend even to today. When when Doe took over, I saw the see all the atrocities he committed, no one's able to speak up to him, except guys like Alaric Tokba and those guys. Those were the bravest guys I've seen ever. But today we see a lot of people that nobody wants to get up and call a spade a spade. I think our backs have been broken. Our spine is weak, and we don't have that kind of <clears throat> uh, uh, reservation anymore. You know, that conviction is just not there. Thank you. Th thank you, Jimmy. Go ahead, Masa. Okay. Uh, hi, Jimmy. How are you? Good to hear you. Um, and also, uh, my young uh, brother, Mr. Uh, uh, Kanwe. Okay, so... The first caller asks um, whether uh, Momo Jiba, a.k.a. Bulldog, is recommended for prosecution in the TRS report. Yes, he is. He's recommended for prosecution in the TRS report. And his second question is, he said he was at the TRS the hearings in Minnesota, and he heard me argue with, um, with, with Barbara on the implementation of the TRC uh, process. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, the TRC uh, recommendations. So first, the first thing I want to say to uh, the caller, I just forgot his name, is that- Elvis, Elvis. Yeah, Elvis. The first thing I want to say to Elvis is that, by the way, Elvis, thanks for that question. But the first thing I want to say to you is that at the time uh, in Hamlin, when we had the uh, TRC hearings there, the process was still on. And I saw, um, I saw a lot of possibilities that this thing was a good thing because by then Ellen Sirleaf was still, you know, supporting the process. We were not getting all this backlash. You see, the leaders, our leaders, set the tune and set the agenda. Once Ellen, you know, became disenchanted with the TRC because she heard that we were putting her name in the report for the role she played in the war, and she went on the whole PR, uh, PR uh, 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 stunt to discredit the TRC. What it did was it incited warlords, other warlords that Prince Johnson is the rest of them, it incited them to be brave and to come after us because now they saw that the yeah. president was not going to be supporting us. So our leaders have created this thing a lot. And then so what was I thinking at the time? Well, I was thinking, you see, I'm an honest person and I like for the right things to be done. And at the time we had this president who was supposed to have this fantastic uh, relationship with the international co uh, community. She was supposed to be this uh, you know, this uh, person who has you know, human rights violations. Ex ex exactly. So when she came to the TRC and said, you know, uh, you know, if the TRC named you, she was going to make sure that you will face justice. You know, it gave me hope. Our process was still on. It gave me hope. Right. And, 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 yeah. And then also, how was I to know, Mr. Ms. Mr. Elvis? I'm not a sociologist. How was I to know that Ellie, in the end, was not going to support the uh, TRC because her name was on the sanction list or some mm. of her name was there? How was I supposed to know? And and secondly, um, the way he asked the question, it, it came across like it was the responsibility of commissioners as part of our work to ensure, yeah, to ensure yeah. that right. that the, the, the recommendations would be implemented. No, the TRC had cleared it stated once we presented our final report with the recommendations our work was over we went back into into civil society it was the human rights commission the international human rights commission was supposed to pick up from the trc work and continue to advocate it and the president of the republic of liberia is responsible to implement the report that is the executive branch and the legislative branch is supposed to serve as a monetary arm to remind the president every quarter if, if nothing is done about the implementation of the recommendations, the legislature is supposed to, you know, invite the president to come to the Capitol building to say, why are the recommendations not being implemented? If, if he's having any problem, let them know. And as a government, they work through those problems. So, uh, Ms. Mr. Elvis and everybody out, out there, people ask me all the time, why was your report not implemented? If it was a good report, why was it not implemented? You know, that is a crazy question because we did not have the mandate to implement the report. That was not our work. Our work was done once the final report was 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 uh, uh, presented. Now, what I do, I do it because I'm a Liberian. I love Liberia. I, you know, I, I love advocacy. It's, it's one of my strengths. I studied the TRC. I studied what happened in Liberia. So I have some information that I love to share with the public. But this is not my job. This is the responsibility of all Liberians. Why the president is responsible to, to spearhead the implementation of the report but the entire Republic of Liberia, every Liberian are supposed to be pushing for the implementation of the report because the recommendations of, you know, are good for Liberians. So Mr. Elvis, everybody else, you know, this fight is not just mine or Dennis. You are also supposed to get on board. So it's a good thing to, you know, always listen to what I say and, you know, and, and, and give me kudos. But then you also supposed to get involved actively to encourage George Bia. So, you know, George, we are needs to implement the recommendations. Thank you, Masa. Let me bring in two more callers here. The first is Mr. Aliyu Kamara. Aliyu, go ahead, sir. Okay, then let me say hi to Miss, I don't know if I should say Miss or Mrs. I don't know which one, but uh, Masa Washington, just going to say sorry. Uh, listen, I hate to, to say anything that my reduce the potential or motivation of Ms. Washington in this process. I first of all want to tell her thank you for the job well done. Um, she has put herself in a very risky position. A 
as far as all of those people who sat on the bench as commissioners uh, through the uh, through the reconciliation process, he has been the one in the bank and actually putting herself at some very serious risk. And I think that's patriotism to the core. Uh, my only thing is, looking at Liberia's history, uh, I think it is a lost cause in many respects. And the reason why I say that is, just look at us. Um, the focus has been on two people. And people talking about Momo Jiba. Guys like Momo Jiba became popular during the of the ATU, Chancellor of Soko and Authority Unit. Um, that's when he, and not, not to say that, you know, he had a clean slip, but he's not among some of the most ridiculous people. If you look at a guy that has been totally forgotten by the Truman Reconciliation Commission, a guy called Benjamin Yetin, he's not far. He's just right there across from Ghana. He's in Lamed Togo. This is a man, is a man who killed in the open. This is a man who was known to be a killer. You think the TRC is focused on this guy? Most of the people the TRC is focused on are those people who, dare, who work in offices and and other areas who are able to say they're responsible. But the direct killers have been ignored to, to a great extent. Let's look at, let's just go back. You see, Liberia would have a very good president, and Tolba, probably, I'm not a fan, but looking at all the other presidents, Tolba was probably the greatest amongst those who came uh, from overseas. But who did they celebrate the most in Liberia? The most brutal, brutal dictator called William B. Stockman. His holiday is his birthday yesterday. My people, mm -hmm. I mean, they had a conversation. Mm -hmm. And the whole city was out of shutdown. Everywhere was quiet. Everybody was celebrating Tubman. How many times have you seen anybody celebrate Tubman? They celebrated Tubman they got a holiday, my man. They don't even know who Tubman is. But why, why, why can't they celebrate Tubman on a holiday? No, no, but there's no holiday for Tubman. Let us not go into history. But, but thank you for the call. I'm not trying to cut you off. Yeah, thank you. But and, and when you say they don't focus on Benjamin Yetan, Benjamin Yetan is in the TRC report. So when you say focus, I don't know what you mean. Oh yeah, oh yeah, just putting his name in the TRC report as far as the way other people have been highlighted. Like and, like and like, who? Like, like who? Like who? Like the situation in France that, that took Martha Washington to France in recent times. You can call my name. You guys are going all the way to France to fight a case that you almost lost. Why not go right to Africa where there's a guy who you can, who can win any case against at any time? Right. So, Ali, the way it works is you carry the complaint. Massa was calling you as a I professional. Oh, 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 hold on now. Hold on. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Massa was calling you as a professional witness. Somebody carried a complaint. They say they're pressing or committing atrocities. So, that's what all of us will be doing. And uh -uh. mm -hmm. when you say focus, not focus, please focus on somebody so we can end the impunity. I'm already focused on somebody. I just, I just put it, I just put it out there for you. Now you can go and file your. No, no, you, 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 you file, you file that complaint. But, but thank you. Let me bring in the, our last caller. Thank you. That's uh, Houston Brooks. Go ahead, Houston. Hey, brother John and uh, Madam Washington. You know, this is uh, I've read about the uh, TRC report and, and Madam Washington the great work that she and other honorable Liberians did over the years. And uh, this is the very first time I have the opportunity, at least, well, not to see her, but to engage her in person. So we give a heartfelt thanks to her. We give a heartfelt thanks to her for everything. This woman, over the decades, man, I don't know what to say. I like the words, but Madam Washington, let me just keep it simple and say thank you. Now... In line with uh, Mr. Kamara, that just the last caller, uh, I will not, uh, I'm hopeless. Uh, I would say I'm very pessimistic mm -hmm. about, about any, as you see in Liberia, we missed the mark. We missed the mark. We take the case of Wanda. When Wanda happened, when they had the, the reconciliation and, and they had the, the bodies, of people that were accused of atrocity in the Uganda Civil War to justice. We missed that mark. So I think the best way forward 
um, the Madam Washington mentioned on, on, on the show about, like, for instance, the case in France. I think the best way forward, we we expose these people if they are out of the country. And like you say, we, we bring cases forward on these people when they are out of the country. Because let us stay confined to Liberia. Liberians are not going to do nothing. You had an interview with Mr. Comis. Mr. Comis showed by his action already that he do not have the political will to bring anybody to justice for the atrocities during the, of the Civil War. And I'm telling you, the, 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 for in, in all of our country to move forward in development, we have to face these realities. So I don't think any like government is going to come into power that's going to hold these people accountable. But we, as, as a people, I think the best way forward we organize ourselves to identify these people that are or, already outside the country and see how we can bring them forward, you know, to be held accountable. So my question to her is, is there a way that we can organize ourselves? Is there, what, what is her message or concrete message before the show ends that we keep an eye out for these people that are committed atrocities against our people outside of Liberia and we identify them to the international community? Thank, thank you. Uh, where do we go? What number to call? Who do we report to? Because Liberians, as a people, we are not going to do nothing in Liberia. I don't see any Liberian government coming to Boaca that's going to have the political will to bring these people to justice. Th thank, uh, thank you, you, thank you, you Mr. Brooks. It's been a long time talking to you, brother. I, thank I you, know. Thank you, thank you. I'm, thank I'm still listening. Thank you. Miss uh, Washington, you, you're muted. And I have one more caller who wants to call on my WhatsApp number. Caller, when you listen, you can call. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, go ahead, Ms. Washington, and respond to our callers. Oh, you want me to go ahead, Dennis? Yes, please. Okay, sure. So I would just like to just say maybe just something briefly to yes. uh, Mr. Alio Kamara. The, the caller before this guy, he was Alio Kamara, right? Yeah. I want to make sure I got his name right. Yeah, so, you know, Mr. Uh, um, I mean, Alio, if I can call you that. Thank you very much for your contribution tonight, and I do appreciate it. But like Dennis stated, uh, we are not focusing on specific people. Uh, uh, Mr. Benjamin Yetin, like you readily said, is one of the biggest, you know, perpetrator in this entire Liberian uh, 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 saga, the SARS story, and he actually should be uh, prosecuted. So Mr. Benjamin Yetin is in the TRC report for prosecution for war crimes. So it's not, you know, he's not in a TRS report for domestic prosecution, but for war crimes, meaning that if the international community get hold of Mr. Yeten, like you said, he's shortly in between uh, 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 Ghana, the Ivory Coast, and, and uh, Togo. When at the time of the TRC process, we heard he was in Togo and then, but you know, he moves around because he's a man on the run. He's a man on the run. And uh, so hopefully they will catch up with, with Mr. Yeten but that is outside of my in the purview. I do not have the authority to do that. I only assist when I'm called upon to assist when they capture, not capture, but when they arrest people and the thing I can help, they call me, I will help and I will say it again. I will help and I will not be afraid and I will not, um, I will not hesitate at all to help because much as the perpetrators got their supporters and they are brave and they are, they are disrespectful to victims, and they 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 are they, ca they are callous. They don't care. They they lack empathy. They don't care about victims as long as they are brave enough to come out to beat their chest after slaughtering people. Then guess what? They cannot stop my voice. I will be brave brave enough as well. Anytime they call upon me to assist, I will assist. Anytime I will be brave enough to assist. And so uh, also, Mr. Brooks. Uh, so thank you very much for your comments, for your kind comments. I appreciate it. We do not get paid for what we do, but hearing appreciation and respect come from someone like you, um, you know, is, is, it really goes a long way. So thank you very much. Like I stated earlier, if you send me a Facebook, uh, 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 Facebook friend request, Mr. Brooks, I will okay your friend request. I will send you some numbers and, you know, and uh, where you need to call. And you can you can you know uh, distribute this number to other people. If you see any of these guys who you know, not to lie on people. People should not just come and give you somebody's name because the 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 person was friendly with somebody who were with the NPF or friendly with somebody who are in the AFL. No, these has to be real. These have to be real real cases. If you know mm -hmm. someone 
<laughs> who really hurt people, who really, you know, perpetrated gross violation of human rights against people in the, if they're out of Liberia and they're out of Africa and they're in these parts, in the United States or in Europe, you, you, I will send you that number, call that number and let them know. And if you can get that person information, pass it on. So because the perpetrators are going to be this brazen to, to, to destroy people's families, to, to kill people, massacre villages and towns, and then don't have any remorse of conscience, why should we be shy to advocate for our families who they slaughter? Thank you. Let me get this uh, overseas caller. Call him WhatsApp. Go ahead, call your name and where you calling from. Go ahead, call him. You are live. All right, I think for some reason he's muted there. Oh, Dennis, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Dennis? Yeah, go ahead, you are live. Okay, sorry, I muted, I muted my call. Yes, I said, my name is Julius T. Jason the second. I uh, join your conversation from the, the Middle East. Uh, let me salute and say thank you to Mrs. Washington for the moral courage demonstrated to stand for Liberia, stand for justice on the south of Liberia war victims who have been abused by these horrible assassins and perpetrators of carnage. Today, some of them are walking free in the liberal society, uh, especially people who want advocated for transitional justice yesterday, advocated for justice for liberal war victims today. Some of them are at the helm of political authority in our country, and the silent, like uh, uh, the silent, like a gray yarn. Well, you see, you see, I can recall sometime in 2007 when we occurred now the forum for the establishment of war crime court in Liberia that was held up by then Chairman Mola Molu, Puaka Jaliba, you had Jefferson Kochi. And the 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 the, the, race, the general register at the Liberal Business Registry. Uh, Some of other people, I can recall when when George Bush came to Liberia in 2007, we took Yaski, the many victims uh, for Liberian work, and you know, work, uh, justice for Liberian work, faith and rare. We advocated for the establishment of a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a criminal court to prosecute war laws. Thankfully, the TRC Commission was established. In 2010, the TRC Commission released her final report. We thought that the President Sally Johnson, Sally Governor, would have scrupulously implemented in totality the report of the two TRC Commission. Sadly, because President Zelly was implemented, uh, implicated in that TRC report, today the report was never impl uh, implemented under her regime. But we thought that people like Molu, Akaras Gray, Jefferson Kochi, and tons of other people who won yesterday stood on the side of Liberian war victims demanding justice during the regime of Ellen Jones and it was part of the reason why the rose to power to they have a bigger platform to demand accountability, to demand justice, you know, for Liberian war victims by asking the very leader that they created, President, President George Ria, to ensure the scrupulous implementation of the TRC report today. They are silent today. Some of them say they no longer believe in, in, in the establishment of a war crime court today. So you see, that says a lot about people who come to the Liberian people and pretending as though they genuine in the quest for justice in the advocacy for only one opportunity to come to power and abuse the very same people, the very same victims that they, they pretend to be standing for today. So it is sad. But particularly, I want to ask Madam Washington to say to us, because she also mentioned about Louis Brown. And I think in the TRC report, Louis Brown was accused for economic support. Can she explain to the Liberian people the particular role that Louis Brown played in the Liberian civil unrest? Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Washington? Okay. So thank you very much, um, Julius. 
uh, you know, it's good to hear you and uh, good to hear your perspective. My man, you're very eloquent. I hope uh, Liberia will have the opportunity to have you come home and help in these processes. So I'm not going to go into a long tirade with uh, with Louis Brown and any of these guys, but let me just say this. Louis Brown was um, across the line with Charles Taylor during the um, war with Liberia was um, in the throats of the Civil War. He was one of those quote unquote young people and confidant uh, of Mr. Charles Taylor. He was there when they were raining rockets on people in Morovia and uh, he, uh, you know, one of, he was one of the <clears throat> spokesmen for Taylor. He was also foreign minister, information minister, and uh, he was a confidant of Mr. Taylor. Security advisor also. Yeah, you know, uh, advisor, you know, and then the Taylor sent him to the, uh, of, was it Taylor or Ellen who sent him to the United Nations? So when you have someone like this, uh, a confidant of a warlord, uh, not just somebody who Mr. Taylor knew, but somebody who he trusted, who was, you know, by his bosom, you know, they were the, the, the top leaders, the top tier leaders who were running the MPF, when they were running rockets on people and stuff that Louis Brandon used to hear on the radio, justifying that, you know, uh, of they said they were, they were fighting against Echo Mark, raining rockets on on, on the, the, the fellow or, or, or citizens in, in in other parts that were not in PFL territory. So just to give you uh, just a little gist of some of, some of the roles that Louis Brown played, uh, Louis Brown was on sanction list. I think you guys know he was on the, the UN sanction list and, 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 and what have you. So I will stop there. For now. I will stop here for now. Thank, thank you. And, and uh... what happened because of the MPF irrespective of everything else that will be said, one thing happened. This country grew to know the meaning of war. Let's let listen, let listen to the second thing that Louis Brown said happened as a result of NPF. Anymore. I believe if we learn nothing from the NPF, we learn first that war is no Sometimes you read about it, you think it's just easy. But I believe we learned that war is no good. The second thing we learn as a result of the MPF experiment is, importantly, it is possible for Liberians of all walks of life, influences and persuasions to come together under a single umbrella. It is not impossible. There will be difficulties doing that. But it is possible that we can still come together. Because I, I, I say to you with all honesty, that that MPFL, whatever you wish to call it, was the house of all kinds of elements that make up the Liberian society. All right. So that's Louis Brown calling the mayhem, the atrocity has NPFL experiment. Yes. He also said the NPFL shows that Liberians can come together. Well, Liberians did not come together. They were conscripted. Exactly. People were abducted into the militia. People were killed. So when Louis Brown said the NPF experiment, I wonder what was his hypothesis going into this experiment? Mayhem? Rape? Carnage? So enough of what Louis Brown did. Louis Brown was with Taylor, and uh, this is how he justified the war. Let me get your response to that video master yeah absolutely and uh, the thing about it is that uh, as a journalist i was trained to also be observant uh, but dennis you are a trained journalist you went to uh, you you're a student of, of, of communications so we're trained to not only listen to what people say but we're trained to deconstruct what people say and then listen to what they don't say so we listen to what people don't say but then you see we also listen to the body language see the arrogance in louis brown over there when he's talking about the, you know, he's actually speaking about the NPF, this murderous National Patriotic Forces mm -hmm. of Liberia, NPF. He's speaking about this murderous uh, 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 bunch of bandits, as if to say there were some regular, oh, normal, bad, bad. yeah, there was some regular, normal institution, you know, that maybe just made some mistakes. Then he's talking about experiment. What are you talking about? What, what experiment? The NPF experiment? Go and, and engage the victims. Go and engage the, 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 the pregnant woman who they, they, they open her stomach to bet on, 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 on the baby, the sex of the baby. Go and engage the father whose daughter was raped in his person, 
you know, and then and then his wife was raping the person. Go and engage the young boy who is now traumatized because he was made to have sex with his mother in the public in front of his father and in front of, you know, other people fleeing the war. Go and engage those people, Louis Brown. And this is the thing. You don't hear people like Louis Brown. There is no iota of empathy for what has happened here. Okay? These people are not even coming to say, look, this thing happened, it went wrong, we're sorry, you know, uh, or how can we make up? Because the TRC, one of the TRC recommendations also is that some people will um, unveil themselves to the Palawa hut, and when they get there, part of their, part of their, 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 their punishment is that they will make restitution. Somebody like Ben and I, who got all that money now, Ben and I should be talking about making official restitution to the reparation fund for victims. So somebody like Louis Brown, all that arrogance that Lewis Brown showed at the TRC, that body language, that, you know, carry on like that. It's the same arrogance he, arrogance he carried. When you meet uh, 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 Lewis Brown today at any forum, he comes to argue with you about the TRC process as if to say, I really care. I did my job. I'm absolutely proud of what I did. If I had to do it again, more names would be in our report. If I have any regrets about the TRC, if I have any regrets about the TRC uh, process, my regret is why we put more names. For real, for real. That's my regret. So you see Louis Brown over there. Okay. So is that the posturing and, and, and language of anybody who is contrite, who wants reconciliation? You're talking about people, children being conscripted, people, wives and daughters snatch off the line to go and forcibly be, be bush wives to rebel fighters. And then you're talking about, oh, it was an, the NPF experiment brought everybody together. Who are the everybody brought together? Some of us who were, when, when the NPF took us from on the old road, August 9, I will never forget. The NPF took us from on the old road, August 9, and took us to Dupo Road, to stay on Dupo Road for one month. It was a, it was, it was a killing field. You saw what Echo Mark liberated Dupo Road. You saw the, the pyramid of scars, not only scars, but the pyramid of, of human bones. Dupo Road was a hellhole. It was a hellhole. And some of us were lucky we survived it. There were others who didn't survive it. So what is Louis Brown talking about? Louis Brown was one of the uh, uh, a prodigy of Mr. Charles Taylor. Louis Brown, Tia Fakate, Augustine Yiswa, or what his name, Mohammed, or Dukle. They were all, you know, prodigy or, or, or Charles Taylor. They were the quote unquote young people <coughs> who, in, who in, you know, did this vicious yeah. uh, or, or wheel of the NPFL. They, and this they is the found that Mr. Cummings, this is why some of us who were sympathetic towards Mr. Cummings before, this is why we just don't say anything now because there's the same Louis Brown that Mr. Cummings is flaunting our face and they, and they say it's okay. We should not say anything. When you question, then your friends in the, in, the, in the ANC, they get upset with you, they call you names, they disrespect you and carry on. But then you don't expect me to be some um, bobo person here. I have my independence. This is why I'm John political party. This is why I'm an independent. Because I want to be free to speak the truth when I see it. And not because to be beholden. The thing with Liberians is that, you know, they, they, they just want to be behave like this, this herd uh, mentality type of way. So when they're in these political parties, they don't see anything wrong with the leaders. Even when the person is making mistakes, sometimes these people are not bad people. Liberians make their leaders sometimes. They also help to contribute to make the leaders bad. Mr. Comis Khan, maybe he means well. But he start making some mistakes. He doesn't know some of the things that happen like bro. He doesn't know some of the things that happen on the ground. That man is making some mistake. We don't expect you to come out in the public and, 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 and disassociate from your political leader. But go to him, meet with him, discuss with him, and let him know. Say, oh no, these things happen before. Instead of that, y'all want to come and attack people like me who are saying it, who you know, who are talking about it. I said to say I read it here. Thank We're you. not looking for friends. You know, we are, we are disappointed because we thought Mr. Cummings were going to be different. You come by, you jump behind Louis Brown, you jump behind Dan Mariah. That Dan Mariah then looted Harper, the, the massive generator that was providing light to the whole of Harper, Maryland County, and, and, and Plebo. That Dan Mariah then that dismantled that, 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 that or, or, or generator, brought it to Charleston. I think they said they sold it to, to Avocos or Burkina Faso. Today, the whole Maryland County, Harper, that was once one of the best cities in, 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 in Liberia, Harper is still in perpetual darkness. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. That was the voice of Massa Emilio Washington. Our programming continue tomorrow. Join us for Tough Talking Thursday. This is where we don't encourage any form of tabata. Come and join us for Tough Talking Thursday. I'm going to have Mr. Ivar Tokba and Jenna John Dolake join me 
and the tough talking panel to talk about the vision of Mr. Alexander Benedict Cummings. You don't want to miss that. We'll have Admir Salif, Mohammed Sharif, and Dr. Mohammed Mo Abdullah Dukle will be the panelists. And then on Saturday, we're going to have our history channel. The Labra History Channel will continue with presidents of Labra series. The president we're going to be discussing is Alfred F. Russell. You don't want to miss it. Our presenter, Carl Famula, will be there. This Sunday, Focus on Labra is starting a brand new program called Hello Pastor. Hello Pastor is a sit down with Reverend Dr. Chandler Freeman to answer some of the toughest questions, those thought-provoking questions about the Bible and the Christian faith. That show is moderated by me. Please don't miss it. It's Hello Pastor every other Sunday at 6 p.m. Ms. Pastor, thank you very much. Uh, I can't thank you enough for always accepting to come and have this discussion. At this time, we want to get your closing comments as we close down the program for the night. Um, thank you, Dennis, as always, for providing the forum where we can come and have these uh, discussions that are germane to Liberia, uh, our present, but also the future of our beloved country. And, uh, you know, I would like to say thank you also to all of your listeners out there in listening land, in radio land, and uh, those who took part in, in, the, in the program, the callers and, and people who made comments, thank you so much. We appreciate your comment. Um, Liberians need to be, you know, I say this all the time, sometimes it begins to sound like uh, a scratch record. Liberians need to be serious about our country. When you have had the kinds of atrocities in death taking place in Liberia, you need to address them to be able to move on. Uh, you can't sweep things under the carpet forever. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why, you know, our country is not moving forward is because we are not addressing things. We we um we don't want to address things. We think if we if we just leave things, you know, they will go away. I guess some people are kind of thinking maybe people are <coughs> doing the rest of them thinking, well, you know what? Uh, let's just ignore the TRC uh, report and recommendations and it will just go away and, oh, these people are dying naturally anyway. So I bet they're counting the, uh, the amount of war loss and also key perpetrators who are dying away. But, you know, we just want to say, except we will not be blessed as a country and as a people to get that president who's really going to be a game changer, who's really going to turn like you around for us. If God bless us and if we are still alive, and we get such a precedent, even if all the major perpetrators in war law pass away, even if it's just one or two person, we will still prosecute them symbolically to set that example. Because when people hurt people the way they've hurt people in Liberia, you must address it, you must put in, there must be some form of accountability so that it can help deter would be copycats who want to be, or the next bulldog, who want to be the next. Uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 Kundi and who wants to be the next Benjamin Yitin. We need to protect our, uh, uh, ourselves. The society needs to protect itself. The government, the president needs to protect the, the people of Liberia. And right now, people are not protecting the people of Liberia because they are not protecting their interests. And we will keep talking. We're going to keep talking. Right. Let's keep talking. And thank you for talking tonight. I want to thank our viewers for also being part of the talking tonight. Always keep it here at Focus on Liberia, where we educate, we promote all things Liberia. Until then, on behalf of all of us here at Focus on Liberia, my name is Dennis Ja, wishing you a very good night and closing with our song that says, we are all Liberians. Have a good night. We are Liberians. Liberia is our Ah! Uh -huh.